Welcome to the second part of the chapter, Matter in our Surroundings. In the previous Edurev videos, we have explored matter, its characteristics, classification, and properties. And, in this video, we will see how temperature and pressure can play tricks on the matter, turning it into a different state altogether. The world of states of matter is a place where solids can melt, liquids can boil, and gases can gas off into the atmosphere. Matter exists in three states, solid, liquid, and gas. Water, for example, can exist as ice in the solid form, water as liquid, and water vapor as gas. The interconversion of states of matter refers to the process of changing from one state of matter to another and then back to the original state. Let's begin by understanding how temperature affects the interconversion of matter. One of the most common examples of interconversion of states of matter is the melting of ice. When we increase the temperature of a solid, the kinetic energy of the particles increases, which overcomes the forces of attraction between the particles. Thereby solid melts and is converted to a liquid. The temperature at which a solid melts to become a liquid at the atmospheric pressure is called its melting point. The melting point of ice is 273.16 Kelvin. The process of melting, that is, change of solid state into liquid state is also known as fusion. Let us now understand a very important concept that is latent heat. There is a point when the melting point is achieved and after that point, even if we apply more heat, the temperature of the system does not increase. Do you know? Why? This is because the heat supplied is used up in changing the state by breaking the intermolecular forces of attraction, which hold them in the solid state. As a result, the temperature will remain the same until all the ice melts. This energy required to change a solid into a liquid is called latent heat. The word latent means hidden. Now, there are two types of latent heat, latent heat of fusion and latent heat of vaporization. This is a very important topic from the examination point of view, so make sure you listen closely and take some good notes. Before continuing with the video, here is an important note. You must check out the mind map of this chapter on Eduriv. It provides concise information in a structured way. And, if you want to score good grades, you can also explore Eduriv's mind maps for all the chapters. The latent heat of fusion is the amount of heat energy required to change a solid into a liquid at atmospheric pressure without any change in temperature at its melting point. And the latent heat of vaporization is the heat energy required to convert a liquid into a gas at atmospheric pressure at its boiling point. Students, let's now delve deeper into these concepts, as given in the NCRT textbook. First is the latent heat of fusion. The latent heat of fusion is defined as the amount of heat energy required to change 1 kg of a solid into a liquid at atmospheric pressure without any change in temperature at its melting point. The latent heat of fusion of ice is 3.34 times 10 to the power 5 joules per kilogram. The numerical value of the melting point and freezing point is the same. For example, if the melting point of ice is 0 degrees Celsius or 273 Kelvin, then the freezing point of water is 0 degrees Celsius or 273 Kelvin. A practical example of latent heat of fusion is the process of ice melting in a glass of water. As ice melts, it absorbs heat energy from the surroundings, keeping the temperature of the system constant until all the ice has melted. Moving on to the latent heat of vaporization. The heat energy required to convert 1 kg of liquid into gas, at atmospheric pressure, at its boiling point is known as the latent heat of vaporization. The latent heat of the vaporization of water is 22.5 times 10 to the power joules per kilogram. The process in which a gas, on cooling, turns into a liquid at a specific temperature is called condensation or liquefaction. The formation of clouds is due to the condensation of water vapor from the Earth's surface. A common example of latent heat of vaporization is the process of boiling water. 
The energy required to turn liquid water into steam is absorbed by the water, resulting in a constant temperature until all the water has boiled away. It is interesting to note that the latent heat of vaporization is responsible for the phenomenon where steam can cause more severe burns than boiling water. This is because when steam comes in contact with skin, it releases its latent heat of vaporization, which is a large amount of energy. So students, we have just covered a really important topic which is the concept of latent heat of fusion and vaporization. It's important to have a solid understanding of these concepts for your exams. Next, let's understand the concepts of sublimation and deposition. Sublimation occurs when a solid changes directly to a gas without going through the liquid state. In the case of ammonium chloride, if the heat is not too high, the ammonium chloride undergoes sublimation. This means that the solid ammonium chloride changes directly into a gas without first melting into a liquid. Deposition, on the other hand, is when a gas turns directly into a solid without going through the liquid state. Frost is formed on a cold winter morning due to deposition when water vapor present in the air comes in contact with the cold surface. The water vapor loses heat energy to the cold surface and forms tiny ice crystals directly on the surface without forming a liquid first. These ice crystals continue to grow and form frost. Now let's discuss the effect of change of pressure on states of matter. Gases are compressible because, by applying pressure, the space between the gaseous particles decreases. Therefore, gases can be compressed easily. By applying pressure and reducing the temperature, the gases can be converted into liquids, that is, gases will be liquefied. This process of conversion of a gas into a liquid by increasing pressure or decreasing temperature is called liquefaction. You may have heard of dry ice before. But did you know that it's actually solid carbon dioxide? Unlike many other substances that go through a liquid phase when heated, dry ice skips right over the liquid phase and goes straight from solid to gas. That's right, it sublimates. Solid carbon dioxide gets converted directly to a gaseous state on the decrease of pressure to one atmospheric pressure without coming into the liquid state. We hope that you have understood this topic. And now, you should start studying this chapter with the Edurev app as you get video lectures, notes, a variety of questions, and MCQ tests for all the chapters of each subject. It's like having the entire school in your pocket.